Hi, this is Dr. Paul Knopfler. I'm a professor here at UC Davis School of Medicine, and I'm doing a series of educational videos about stem cells, CRISPR, other uh, innovative technologies. And today's topic is chimeras. So what are chimeras? And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I recently did a post that touches on a lot of different kinds of chimeras. So what you're seeing here is my website, The Niche. It's at ipscell.com. And there's different resources here. There's the blog, but also just lots of different um, resources, like different kinds of stem cells. You can read about these different things. So please check that out. And if you like this video or some of the others, please subscribe to our channel. So the first kind of chimera you can see in this picture that's really striking that I uh, discussed in this blog post recently was a chimera cat or chimeric cat, we might say sometimes. So the idea of a chimera is that it's actually a mixture of two different organisms. And so in mythology, chimeras actually sometimes were mixtures of two entirely different organisms, um, like lions and eagles or things like that. But what we typically mean in the real world is actually mixtures of the same uh, type of organism, but two different individuals. And you can see that kind of manifesting in this really cool cat. And uh, it's got, you know, different coloration, different colored eyes on different sides of the body. And what's going on here, the reason that this is happening is that this uh, cat actually started out as two separate cat embryos uh, in the uterus. And somewhere along the lines of development, these two fuse together and merge together. And uh, sometimes when this kind of embryo fusion happens, the embryo fails. So it can be incompatible with life. But sometimes it goes ahead and develops and forms an actual healthy, mostly healthy or entirely healthy organism like this cat. So this cat actually started out as two separate embryos. It's sort of two individuals in one, if you will. And so you can actually, I guess, go out and buy these cats. They, they look really cool, I think. Um, and I think, you know, you can also sometimes see chimeras in other species as well out in the wild. But the chimeric cat seems like they um, get the most attention and people actually keep them as pets and things like that. So this is sort of a naturally occurring chimera, um, but there's also another type of chimera and that is something that is made during research. And so that was sort of the focus of the another chunk of this blog post and this was chimeric rats. So sometimes researchers will combine either two embryos from different species or take an embryo and put cells from another species into it. And that's what happened in this paper I discussed here. They um, were able to uh, implant human cells into rat brains. And so I should note that sometimes when researchers are making chimeras, they start at the embryo stage. And like I was saying, they can combine two embryos or take an embryo and put like embryonic stem cells from another species into it. But you can also make chimeras um, starting with a, an adult animal and just inject cells from another species into that animal. Like in this case, they injected human cells into rat brains and the human cells took up, um, we call it engrafted, they took up uh, residency in the rat brain. And these researchers reported that the human cells kind of function like you might have anticipated in the rats and were able to um, sense different stimuli and things like that. So there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, make or study these chimeras. I think, you know, of course, these uh, kinds of experiments raise some uh, interesting ethical issues and questions sometimes. So for instance, how many cells of a human being present in a rat would be too many, right? At some point, I guess the risk is here, you could make a rat or you could make a mouse. Um, sometimes people have made chimeric mice with human cells as well, or with monkeys, you know, they might have having cognition that is more similar to a human. And so that's something we have to think about with these kinds of chimeric experiments. You know, it also depends on the type of human cells. So if you're putting in human neurons or cells that become neurons, like certain kinds of human stem cells into an animal's brain, then you might imagine there could be more human-like activity in there, even if it's not necessarily really thought. Um, in experiments where you're starting at that embryo stage I was talking about, and you're mixing human cells, say, with another animal cells, there you have a lot more potential, I think, for ethical dilemmas because the human cells might end up um, being a very large proportion of the resulting chimeric animals 
uh, body. And, and, you know, if they're in the germ cells, like the reproductive cells, that's an issue. Although hopefully people wouldn't breed such chimeras. If you have lots of human cells in a rat's brain, be, because you started out at that embryo stage again, um, again, you really have to think about these kinds of ethical issues. People are exploring pig chimeras as well. And so the idea with these pig chimeras is kind of mostly related to organ transplantation. And so the hope there is that, for instance, you could make a pig human chimera that is almost entirely a pig, but one organ would be entirely human. And so, for instance, you might have a pig that grows an entirely human liver, and then you could use that liver to transplant into a person who has liver disease. And the same kind of thing could be done like with kidney or heart, like you could make a, a pig human chimera that is entirely a pig, except for its heart is entirely human. Um, so there have been recent <clears throat> reports of these kinds of chimeras. And also, I, I think there's also been, you know, for many years, transplantation of animal organs uh, into people like pig hearts uh, for someone who has uh, heart failure that's severe enough that they're going to die. And so in any of these kinds of experiments where you're thinking about organ transplantation, you do have to worry about the immune system. And so sometimes you might have to give immunosuppressive drugs to a person receiving say a human heart grown in a pig, because even if that human heart is 100% human uh, and it doesn't have <clears throat> any pig cells in it, there's lots of pig antigens and things flowing through the blood. And so there are going to be things that um, the transplant recipient getting the pig human chimeric heart um, might have their immune system react to and have a problem. And then it occurred to me, um, there's this other wacky area where people are talking about head transplantation this is in, in a way kind of another way you could actually make a chimera is by swapping someone's head or brain into a new body. Of course, head transplantation raises all kinds of other issues of its own. So, you know, we'll, we'll see if it's ever even something that could practically uh, be done. So that's the main stuff I want to touch on today. You can check out, I've done a variety of posts over the years on different kinds of chimeras. So you can also look at those. I hope this uh, video has been really useful and it's kind of entertaining to think about different chimeras out there that are either made by research or just pop up in nature. So again, this is Paul Knopfler at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'll see you next time.